Hey there. Welcome to Charting Toward Intimacy. I'm your host, Ellen Holloway. Today, I'm joined by Janessa Nufable. Janessa is a Bay Area native, and her husband is actually Joe Nufable, who was on the podcast two weeks ago. Janessa and I talk about talking to your friends about NFP. We share some experiences talking with other people about NFP. We also talk about some tips for you as you're approaching the topic of conversation within your friends. And we also talk a little bit about how natural family planning and discussing that within our friendship has helped us grow deeper in relationship with each other. Let's get started. All right. Well, welcome, Janessa, to the podcast. I'm really excited to have you here today. Hello. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. And today we are talking about, we're talking about talking to your friends about natural family planning. Yeah. It's a, it's a good discussion. It can be hard, but you know, definitely a good discussion to have. Exactly. It's, it can be daunting. It can be a little scary, uh, but it's really worthwhile to have this conversation with your friends. Yeah. So I wanted to start out with you, uh, the reason why you came to my mind when I wanted to talk about this topic is you've shared stories about how you've talked to your coworkers about natural family planning. So can you tell me a little bit about your experience talking to your coworkers about this? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So just to, I guess, preface for those who are listening, um, I work in a secular workplace. Um, yeah, so we don't really talk about religion or politics and we try to keep things as PC as possible. Um, and yeah, and so, but we have lunchtime conversations and you become friends with your coworkers and, you know, they ask you things about your personal life and yeah, so that's kind of how it came about. Sure. Um, so I started having that conversation because I was preparing for marriage and, you know, a lot of my coworkers knew, you know, have known me and got to know my, my husband and so they, you know, asked about how we're preparing. And one thing that they were always surprised about was the fact that he and I didn't live together uh, before getting married. Um, and that, you know, we weren't planning on moving in together until after we were getting married. And so obviously that was something that was of interest. And then, you know, they were asking, it's like, well, they started asking more personal things. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it was just about like, well, what do you guys do? And it's just like, well, I'm, you know, I'm waiting until marriage to, to have sex and, and all that. And, you know, we talk about kids and all that. And I mentioned that, oh, yeah, we're not using any birth control or any type of contraceptive. We're going to be doing natural family planning, NFP. And that was just already a topic of interest along with everything else. Uh, <laughs> you were just like this unicorn. They're like, what? Tell me actually, more. Yeah. <laughs> how I felt. I definitely felt like a unicorn. Um, but they were definitely interested about natural family planning and what that meant. And so I, I kind of explained it to them as, I guess, as secular and as pretty l like in layman's term, mm -hmm. uh, what that meant. Um, and so I just kind of explained that, you know, in, in my belief and as a Catholic, like, we are open to life and that's through the whole walk of your, your marriage. Right. So we don't stop it or prevent it or, or do anything to block it. Um, but there is a way of planning and that's using the rhythm of the woman, like the, the natural body rhythm and the cycles. And I just said, yeah, like just kind of like how a woman would be taking birth control every day at the same exact time. I would take my temperature and that would tell me my, uh, when I'm fertile, when I'm uh, not fertile. And I just got used to how my body was working after how many like months of tracking and right. yeah. And so I said, huh? Oh, I was just, yeah, I was just agreeing <laughs> with you. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I just told him that I got so good at like predicting that I knew like when would be a safe time for us to have sex without the potential of, you know, conceiving a child. And again, a lot of that is just discussion with me and him. It's a lot of trust with him. And again, it just was very fascinating to some of my coworkers because one, like they've never heard of anything like it before. Um, and two, it's just, I don't think they could fathom the fact that we put 
not just so much trust in each other, but also so much trust in ourselves mm. that like what we were doing. Um, and the one thing that I, I mean, I could have said it, I didn't really say it, but a lot of it had the trust in God. Right. And again, not to say that I was hiding it, but just to kind of keep things as comfortable, like for my coworkers, I didn't want it to be like a, a preachy moment, but I just wanted to say like, <laughs> this is something that he, that, you know, my husband and I wanted to do together and are going to be working at, and we trust each other. That's why we're getting married. And, you know, we, we were working on this together and we are working on it together up until now, like, you know, Absolutely. Right. You guys don't have a kid yet. So yeah, <laughs> yeah and we're going to keep going to keep doing it until, you know, we discern and, and decide that we're ready to, to start a family. Exactly. Well, and I think one of the things that you mentioned, it comes up a lot when, when people do take the plunge and actually talk to their friends about NFP is that um, people are fascinated by it. Uh, it's not well enough known in our just world, in our day-to-day life, in our healthcare system of how the female body works and how these are, there are these natural biomarkers that indicate uh, fertility and uh, relative infertility. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, once you get over that fear, maybe that's sitting with you of going, I don't really want to talk to my friends about NFP. Uh, once you get over that and, and actually do start that conversation, people are just like, they're like, wow, how did I not know that this is how my body works? This is amazing. Yeah. And that was the other thing too, because they were kind of shocked at how open I was to talking about it, but it's kind of like, well, you have a body. I have right. a body. <laughs> this is something actually all of us go through. Exactly. Like I'm not talking about anything like crazy. <laughs> right. and, and like they couldn't even understand the fact that I was having these kinds of discussions with, you know, my husband. And I'm like, well, yeah, that's, you know, going to be my husband. I, I want to have these trusting conversations and he's going to know everything about me. I'm going to know everything about him. And, you know, it's, it's part of it. Right. I heard this quote uh, a couple of years ago and it was like, if you can talk about mucus with your husband, you can, you can talk about anything. Exactly. (laughs) It's weird, but you know, it's the, it's the truth. And it's, it's, and I think the same goes for friends. If you can talk about mucus with your friends, you can talk about anything. To go on what you were saying. um, Exactly. Like I started to learn more about natural family planning by talking to you and how open you were with, um, you know, your process and, and learning about it and all that when you were preparing uh, for marriage. So it's like, you know, we were comfortable talking to each other. So it's, you know. Right. It's easy to talk about NFP with a friend when you already know that they use NFP. Like yeah. if you already know that, like you're in, you're solid, just like start talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> so Okay, so let's jump into just some tips, ideas for uh, for talking to your friends about NFP. So uh, I think we're going to talk about kind of two separate situations. First being that a friend comes to you asking you some sort of a question. And then I want to talk about you approaching your friend uh, to talk about natural family planning. So what are some... Uh, what are some tips when, when somebody comes to you and let's say it's in a situation like with you and your coworkers, maybe it's a little bit more of a secular friend, uh, someone who maybe they are Catholic, but they are not really practicing, um, or something like that. What are some tips? Yeah. So, um, kind of like what I said when I was sharing my story is I knew my coworkers and the fact that they came from all these different backgrounds and cultures and beliefs, uh, so it's kind of like knowing your audience, right? Sure. You don't want to shock them if you are uh, <laughs> gung ho in your Catholic faith or whichever you you know you believe in. Um, I wouldn't go shocking them with that. Uh, I would just <laughs> kind of keep things as as simple terms as you know as basic and kind of relate to them as much as you can uh, to sure. have that conversation. It definitely feels a lot more comfortable, and I think that's why my coworkers were so open to asking me all these questions because I kept things pretty simple and basic. Definitely. And I think it's important even in any conversation about faith, like you don't want to be like 
choking people with your faith. You don't want to shove it down their throats. Yeah. Um, and so that the same goes for NFP. Uh, a lot of times you need to start small, especially if you, if you know your audience, like, uh, like your coworkers, very secular environment. It's really not, it's not even the place to talk about faith, um, yeah. you know, in, in that particular workplace that you work in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it, consider it kind of like an invitation, right? Um, just sure. Inviting them to the conversation and just meeting them where they're at. And then from there, I think you could really build Right. Because as soon as you spark their interest with NFP, then the questions keep rolling in. And I know that's, that's been my experience. Uh, just a few weeks ago, I had a friend of mine. Um, I, I was, I, I was actually with you, Janessa, we were talking about NFP and she was there and she was like, hold on, what are you guys talking about? Yeah. And mm -hmm. we took a step back. We started explaining a little bit about it. And I mean, her questions did not stop. They just yeah. kept rolling in and she was just fascinated by what we were saying and, and how it all worked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like giving people something that's easy to chew on, um, yes. something to start with, that is really key in this conversation. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's why I kind of led with, uh, you know, a lot of people take birth control and they take it at a certain time every single day and you have to do it consistently for it to, you know, work. Um, and so I kind of just said that same thing. It's exactly what I do, except I just take my temperature. I don't ingest anything. I don't put anything into my body. I'm just literally measuring something that my body is naturally doing and writing it down. Right. Exactly. Any, any other tips for like when a friend comes to you? I mean, I think it's, it's okay to also state your beliefs and, you know, why you believe in something and, you know, why you choose not to do something. Cause I, I think it's important for them to understand where you're coming from. Right. Um, give them something to think about. Um, Cause you know, I, as you know, as Catholics, but also just, you know, as, as humans, like I, I see the beauty of being able to, to create life. And for me, exactly. it's, you know, I, it's not something that I'd want to control, uh, mm -hmm. but it's more of something that I want to welcome and kind of be a part of. Um, and that's why I believe in natural family planning. Like, yes, I understand that, you know, as Catholics, we believe in, you know, pro-life and, and, you know, that life begins at uh, conception and all that good stuff. And it is good stuff. Um, but I think, you know, when you kind of explain why you believe things in, in your own way versus what like the typical teachings are, mm -hmm. uh, they get to know you better and they get to kind of see that bigger picture and hopefully that welcomes them to a, to more deeper conversation and, you know, maybe potentially invite them to research it more and to, to see what it means for them. Absolutely. That's a really good point. I think too, there's a really big difference between the statement, I believe blah, blah, blah. Uh, and you should believe blah, blah, blah. Right. Mm -hmm. So if you're stating it from your perspective, this is what I believe. This is why I think it's important and not turning around and saying you should do it this way and you should do this and you should, you should, you should. Um, it opens up the conversation so much more. And I think too, just talking about um, why you don't want to use contraceptives mm -hmm. uh, can be a great place to start too, is just um, talking about uh, particularly the side effects from hormonal birth control or just really specific reasons why you do not believe in contraceptives can be a great place to start a conversation because again, like what you said uh, when you were talking with your coworkers is, is um, I, I want to be open to life. And so explaining how contraceptives are not open to life um, and, and what that phrase really means, what being open to life really means, not that like you're, you know, want to have 10 kids or 20 or 50. Um, mm -hmm. I don't even think 50 would be possible, <laughs> but, but just that, um, that you're open to it. You're not blocking life. You're not separating the unitive and the procreative part of sexual, the sexual, um, act. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think that also goes into, you know, again, having that conversation of why, you know, why I don't use contraceptives and the, what it does to your body. 
Because I actually think that's something that if, especially if you're interacting with other women who are on birth control, um, that some of those same side effects that, you know, is talked about uh, when you learn about natural family planning and why contraceptives, you know, shouldn't be used. Um, like, it's something that they could even relate to, right? right. Like the crazy hormonal changes it does to your body, how it does to even your mental state and, you know, things like that. Like it's something that you will experience um, or at least the majority experience if you are using contraceptives. Exactly. Yeah. That's a very good point. Um, And I think an important thing, um, you know, since we are talking about um, contraceptives uh, based on who you're interacting with, I think it's important to just have that non-judgmental ear and have that non-judgmental voice uh, because everybody, you know, comes from different walks of life. And I think that's why when you said the importance of using the, you know, words I or why I believe in, Mm -hmm. you know, NFP is again, it's, it's something that you believe in, but you're not like judging another person if they, you know, don't understand it or don't believe it or, or are not, you know, there yet. Exactly. Uh, who who are we to judge? Exactly. <laughs> take yeah. take the beam out of your own eye before you try to get the splinter out of your brother's eye. Mm-hmm. Um, exactly. Like we are sharing natural family planning because we think it's amazing, yeah. and we hope that other people will see how incredible it is, how fruitful it is, how much you can learn about your own body, um, how it can build communication. Uh, within your marriage, Mm -hmm. um, you know, all those benefits from it. We're sharing because of that. We're not trying to share NFP because we think someone else is doing something wrong. Exactly. Yeah. So what about the situation where you have a friend, uh, you, who, let's say you have a friend who's Catholic Mm -hmm. and you know that they're not using NFP and you want to share NFP with them. Where where could you even start with a friend like that? Yeah, so I think a great place to start, um, especially if it is a, your friend, I'm assuming that you can have kind of open conversations and and things like that. Just first checking in with them, like especially if they're preparing for marriage or are married, uh, checking in on just, you know, how how they're doing and what, you know, preparation's like, what marriage is like, and even asking like, so what's your, you know, how's it been in that part of your life and you're in that intimate part of your life. Um, and I think just checking in, just seeing how they're doing first, um, is important. Right. You don't want to just jump into a conversation with a friend and go, Hey, like, have you heard about NFP? (laughs) Hey, have you heard of your savior, Lord Jesus Christ? Right. (laughs) (laughs) And if you're approaching a friend to talk about NFP, you're about to have a really intimate conversation. So you want to make sure like, are are they doing okay everywhere else? Do do they, is there something more pressing that you as a friend could help them with um, before you even jump into talking about NFP? But yeah, absolutely. Making sure that, um, that they're doing okay and, and that you can just be that friend to them, be there for them. Yeah, exactly. And I think from there, that conversation can then lead to like, so like, you know, you've been married for X amount of months, like how's your method of family planning going, right? And whether that's, you know, they're on the pill or using any other contraceptives or which, you know, whatever method they're using, I think it's safe to say as women who have been married for over a year, (laughs) um, that there's complications in everything, right? There's, there's always exactly. awkward moments or, or weird stuff that happens. And, you know, I think you could easily talk to a, a close friend about it, especially, you know, if they have that to relate to you in, right? Absolutely. I think something that's important too is uh, you, again, what we said before, you're not sharing NFP because your friend is doing something wrong. You're sharing NFP with them because you want them to know how cool it is yeah. and, and the fruits of it and what they can gain from using NFP. Mm-hmm. And so a, another great place to start with that friend is sharing your own experience. Mm-hmm. Um, 
or asking them for prayers. Maybe you are in a long period of abstinence and you need prayers and you can explain to your friend why you're in a long period of abstinence and and talk a little bit about NFP and open it up for her to ask more questions. Yeah, exactly. I mean, again, how I got more into learning about NFP besides, you know, my husband knowing about it is that I learned it from a lot of it from you and just (laughs) were open to talking to it about, you know, to me and to some of our other friends and, you know, got me to ask questions and to learn about it. And yeah, so it's just that simple opening up um, about your experiences or what you're researching and finding out, like can easily lead somebody to do the exact same thing. Absolutely. And from personal experience, I will a hundred percent say it gets so much easier to talk about NFP the more you talk about NFP. Yeah. Um, and so if you're just open with the fact that you use NFP and allow that to just naturally come into conversation, um, when you're having, you know, if you're having a girl's night and you guys are talking about things and, and you're just like, oh man, you know, maybe your friend says, gosh, I just, I cannot keep my house clean. It is just a pain. And it's like, okay, well, it's a gripe session right now. And you're like, man, I have just been in like four weeks of abstinence because my mucus is all over the place, right? Like if you just allow that to be part of your conversation, um, then that opens up for, for questions from your friends and, and anything along those lines. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> but it might not come naturally right from the start. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> and, okay. and while it gets easier, sometimes it still is completely awkward to talk about uh, because it's very personal. And there are definitely some things uh, within NFP that are, are not worth sharing outside of your marriage. And so this yeah. is a chance for you to um, exercise prudence in, in what is good to share, what kind of experiences can help a friend, um, learn more about NFP and what really is between you and your husband and God and and what is really that intimate part of NFP. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's the beautiful part of NFP because you are so intimate with your, your husband, um, in that way of just knowing so much about your marriage and the intimate part of your, that intimate part of your marriage, um, that you just become so much closer to that person, um, to, you know, to your husband and that you can not have that exact same closeness, obviously, but have a closeness with, you know, your friends, um, to know that like, things that they're maybe struggling with or things that they may, may need prayers in, um, in that part of their life. Cause I think, you know, knowing especially that they are practicing NFP or that they might be looking into going into NFP, um, that like you, they have somebody in their corner, right? Uh, like praying for them and, you know, just through your journey or even helping you, you know, provide resources or just, you know, a, a friendly ear to, to kind of bounce ideas or bounce, you know, thoughts and stuff off of, like, I think that's just really important. Cause that's one thing that I've learned, um, when I was learning about NFP is just how many people were practicing it and how many people are just, you know, like, Oh yeah, like, don't worry, you know, it's going to be hard, but at the same time, like it's beautiful. And you know, all these, right. you know, I was just getting thrown so many affirmations. Uh, <laughs> And so I think that was, that was really cool to have that, you know, we had, uh, that I had people like in my corner. Right. And, and for prayer too, right? Like, I think you would completely agree. Every couple that is practicing NFP needs people praying for them because there's tough times come up there, like long periods of abstinence or, um, just other things come up within using NFP and just within marriage in general, um, yeah. we all need, we all need people in our corner to be there for support and be there to help us. Um, exactly. so if you, and kind of on that note, if you have, if you have a friend that, you know, uses NFP and you're not like regularly talking to them and making sure like they're doing okay and praying for them, you should step out of your comfort zone, go send a message to that friend, um, and make sure that you put each other in your corners. <laughs> 
help each other out. I want to end on, I had one more thought. Um, as you are thinking about talking to friends about NFP, uh, like we said before, there are certain things that you do want to share and there's certain things that you really probably shouldn't share. And so before you jump into going and talking to a friend, take some time to uh, pray and discern um, you know, what it is that you do want to share and really prepare yourself for that. Like be, be ready with the things that you would want to say and want to get across. And that can help in, in any situation, even if you're not talking about NFP. But if you prepare yourself, then you will feel so much more comfortable talking about it. Um, and just be, you'll be ready for uh, when someone asks you a little bit more difficult question and, and you'll know what you want to say when, when you say, you know, I believe this and this is why I don't use contraceptives and you're, ans- you're, you're finishing those sentences for yourself. You're answering those questions for yourself. Um, being prepared can really help out. Yeah. And also probably if you are married and are practicing NFP, also check in with your husband or wife <laughs> and make sure that they're cool with you <laughs> sharing. That is an extremely good point. <laughs> All right. Well, awesome. Janessa, thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. I loved our conversation. I think we have some great tips here. Um, thank you. Yeah, of course. And thank you. And thank you for what you and Kurt are doing. Um, you know, like I wouldn't be where I'm at without you guys. Uh, and Aww. so- yeah. <laughs> no, seriously. You're making um, me blush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, Joe and I are, are, have learned a lot through just watching you guys and just hanging out and having these kinds of discussion with you guys. So yeah. I hope you enjoyed listening in on our conversation and gained some tips for your own personal conversations with your friends about natural family planning. This episode is the first in our talking to blank about NFP series. Next episode, which is going to launch in two weeks, is going to be about talking to your daughter and son about natural family planning. We are very excited to launch this episode. If you have someone in your life that you would like tips on how to talk to them about natural family planning, let us know on Instagram. Send us a message uh, at charting toward intimacy. Uh, That's toward, not towards. There's no S. So charting toward intimacy. We love hearing from our listeners and you guys have some fantastic ideas. Until next time.